I've just pulled into Kakadu National Park and every time I have done this intro, a fly has flown into my mouth. Yeah, there's all these big rock formations on the side, so I've just pulled over at one to have a look. Pretty much there's a crossing where there's just crocodiles on both sides of the road wanting to catch Barra. down the road that goes to Jim Jim Falls and Twin Falls. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So I have just pulled into Kakadu National Park and every time I have done this intro, a fly has flown into my mouth. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it quick, so hopefully no more do. But yeah, I haven't really planned out a route for us. We're just gonna keep following this road all the way around and we'll stop off at places that seem nice. So yeah, we'll jump back in the car and we'll keep on heading down and yeah, see what we can find. The drive's actually been really pretty. There's all these big rock formations on the side. So I've just pulled over at one to have a look. So yeah, we'll have a little closer look at this and then we're gonna go to this next spot that's not that far away from here. And I'm pretty sure there's paintings on rocks. So that'll be really cool to check out. So yeah, we'll head on out there after this. Indigenous art is an expression of people's identity, culture, spirituality and relationship to our country. It's based on storytelling using symbols and as an alternative method of writing down stories of cultural importance as well as transmitting knowledge of survival. It is regional in character and style, so different areas with different traditional languages approach art in special ways. Much of Indigenous art can be recognised for the community where it was produced. I'm about to lose my bloody hat, but I've just walked up a little bit more to have a look at this lookout from up here. And it is absolutely stunning. You get like a 360 degree view of the whole national park. We have actually just pulled up to a spot that I've always wanted to see, but I didn't actually realize it was all the way out here and it's called Cahill Crossing. And pretty much there's a crossing where there's just crocodiles on both sides of the road wanting to catch Barra. So I'm pretty sure at high tide is the good tide to go to because I'm pretty sure they sit there with their mouths open and then they just try and catch the fish as they jump in. But yeah, on low tide, I'm sure we'll probably see a couple crocs anyway. So I'm not sure what it is now, but we'll go down and have a look. There was one just swimming around there, but I'm actually not sure if I got it on film or not. So I reckon I'll come back when it's high tide just so we can see a couple more. But yeah, there were people that were fishing down there and they reckon they caught a barra before. And then as soon as they went to pull it in, just four crocs came in and ended up taking it off them. So they're definitely in there. They just hide underneath and it's so hard because the water is so murky. So I reckon I'll go around to the boat ramp and we'll try and see if we'll see any over there.
So you're actually not allowed to fly drones in this whole area. So that's why I couldn't get a close up of them. And yeah, with my big camera, I just need a longer lens. So that's on my list of things to get as well. But yeah, they are huge. And there was like eight down there just sitting on the bank. And yeah, there was a few that poked its head up and down in the water as well. So there is so many. I just want to go back to that other spot when it's high tide and try and see if we can actually get them eating. But I'm pretty sure high tides in the morning. So for the salvo, we'll keep on driving around until that sun sets. I thought that we should head back out to yeah where we were a little bit earlier with that big view of the whole area because I reckon it'll be really cool for the sunset. We've probably got about half an hour until that happens. But yeah, back at that crossing back there, you actually do have to have a permit to cross. I've seen videos of where the tide's really high and the water's like gushing over, there's crocs around and then the car's like flying through it. It's really cool. But yeah, not actually allowed to do that unless you do have that permit. But the thing with crocs is there's so many in the wild now. So back in the late 1800s, you could actually hunt them and kill them. But yeah, they banned that. And now there's over like 150,000 that roam around in the wild today. There's a campground not that far from here that I'll probably camp at a little bit later, but it'll probably be dark by the time I actually get down there. So yeah, if it is, I'll see you guys in the morning. Morning guys, so packed up camp and I actually reckon I wanna head back over to that area where all the crocs were. So I went there last night and there was like 50 different sets of croc eyes that were just chilling on top of the water. So there was seriously so many. So hopefully the tide's up a little bit more this morning and they'll be out as well. And then I reckon we'll get a coffee. There's a town that's not that far away from here and then we'll keep on driving around and hopefully we'll see some waterfalls today as well. So we've been driving down the road that goes to Jim Jim Falls and Twin Falls. So we'll go to Jim Jim Falls first, but look how pretty the drive is. It's actually really nice. The road's a little bit average to be completely honest. You do need a four wheel drive, like a high clearance one. And yeah, there was a couple of river crossings and stuff as well, but nothing too deep. I actually don't think these waterfalls are gonna have water in them because it's the end of September at the moment. And yeah, it's coming into wet season. So these have been dry for quite some time, but it'll be pretty to do anyway. And yeah, we'll go and check it out. If anything, it'll just look like a nice gorge. So yeah, we'll keep on heading down. We're not that far away from Jim Jim now. So there's fresh water crocs and salt water crocs in here. So often they'll put croc traps like that on the other end of the river. And then that way they'll catch them in there and be able to relocate them somewhere else. So there's two different choices you can do with the walk. There's a 2K out and back return, or there's a 6K like circuit loop. But it's already over 40 degrees and I think we'll just do the out and back.
Alright, so that was absolutely boiling. I actually sweated through that singlet. So bathe as it is, and now we're gonna head out to Twin Falls. And if I'm being completely honest, I actually can't really be bothered <laughs> doing another hike. But I figure while I'm already out here, it's only nine k's extra down the road. So I may as well. I don't think there'll be water at the top, but it'd be cool to see the lookout anyway. Alright, so I didn't really realize it was gonna be six k's. But oh well, we're here. Let's go do it. Alright, so before I start knuckling down and actually hiking up this massive hill, <laughs> I wanted to mention that I do have a Patreon account. So I post like everyday sort of stuff, behind the scenes, photos, and then I also just figured out how to post uh, YouTube videos before I post it like publicly to you guys. So you can see I'm pretty sure without ads, like days if not weeks before I actually do post it. So if you wanted to join that, just click the link as well and yeah, you'll be able to go across and join. Oh my gosh, I kid you not, that actually zonked me. <laughs> I can see my car, so nice. I actually do want to go to one more spot today. So it's about another 200 k's and it's 4.30 at the moment. So I actually feel like it might be like near on dark when I get there. So I think I will wrap it up here and then stick around if you want to see the waterfall. I'm pretty sure there is water in it. I did check earlier. So yeah, that should be quite nice to refresh in. So yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.